be to God, you may be seated in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Spirit Fellowship Church Wednesday Night Bible Study, where we study the Word of God. For those of you that are online and across the airwaves, I am Bishop D.A. Davis. Someone asked me this week, what does the D.A. stand for? Are you a district attorney? I said, of course not. I'm divinely anointed. So my name is Divinely Anointed Davis, amen, and I am the shepherd here at Spirit Fellowship Church located in DeSoto, Texas, and we thank you if you are watching us via YouTube or Facebook, we appreciate your attendance tonight as we study the Word of God. I love that second phrase of that song, so forget about yourself. And concentrate on him. Hallelujah. I'm always ecstatic about that passage of that verse. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to find the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. And I want you to find chapter 13. Acts 13. Hmm. Hallelujah. All right, in Acts chapter 13, I want to draw your attention to verse 36. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid or buried with his fathers and saw corruption. Hallelujah. Verse 37. But he whom God raised from the dead, who we know is Jesus Christ, who God raised up, did not see what? Corruption. One man saw corruption. Another man did not see corruption. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 38. Let it therefore be known to you as a believer. Therefore, brothers, that through this man, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And by him, everyone who believes is what? Freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, and praise be to God. Let's just talk for a brief moment about press in and hold on tightly. Amen? Press in and hold on tightly. Now, I want you to get the context of this passage of Scripture. So whenever you begin reading in the middle of the end of the chapter, the Bible technique is to do what? Go back to the beginning. Amen? Glory to God. Thank you, Deacon. So let's go to chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church at Antioch, what? Prophets and what? Teachers. There was an apostle by the name of Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. There was Lucius of Serene. There was Manaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Techarch, and Saul. Seven people all together. Amen? And we all know that seven is the number of completion. But now watch this. While all seven of them were together, notice what happened. They were worshiping. They were fasting. Worshiping the Lord. And fasting. And guess what? When those two components happen, the Bible said what happened? The Holy Spirit spoke. Can we get that to happen in our modern day church? Where we began to worship the Lord. And then we worship so long that we skip lunch. And we end up fasting through lunch. And the Holy Spirit spoke. Speak to us. And he gave these instructions. 
Set apart for me the Holy Spirit, Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Here is an indication whereby every preacher, whether man or woman, of God is what? Called. The Holy Spirit said, separate Barnabas and Saul for the work or the ministry that I have called them to. So now, who separated them? The Holy Spirit. How did he separate them? By commanding them and a what? An assignment. Can I get an amen? So now what's the application of the text so far? If you are born again, then you have what? An assignment on your life. Amen? So watch the text. Watch the text. He goes on to say, then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them. Okay, verse 4. So when they laid their hands on them, what did that represent? They were commissioned, hallelujah, to go out and operate in the authority of God. So now look at verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and as they were going, they ran across a certain musician, a certain magician by the name of Barhesus. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Wherever the word of God went, there was always what? Opposition. Isn't it unusual that when you go in the name of the Lord, you are encountered with what? Opposition. So it happened here in the Bible. It happens in your life and in my life. The moment you say you're going to do something for God as we would have it, you need to do what? Expect opposition. Can I get an amen? But the opposition was what? A magician, a sorcerer, a witchcraft priest. Watch this now. You don't just deal with anything. You deal with things that are powerful in the underworld. See, God don't send you chumps as demons. Hallelujah. You get to deal with chief demons, high priest of demons. And watch this now. Just like we have arch angles, we have arch what? Demons. I'm going to prove that to you here in just a little bit. So Bar Jesus interrupted the word of God. Now look at verse 7. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intellect, who summons Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. Now don't miss that. That's important. The Holy Spirit said, separate Barnabas, Barnabas and Saul. So he sent them their separate ways. But whatever way they went, they went on what? Assignment. Because they were called by the Holy Spirit. So then, is it, if, if you are called by the Holy Spirit, does that mean you are preacher, teacher, pastor? No. All you have to be is what? Born again. So if you were born again, then how did you become born again? You were called. Amen? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So now watch this. Being called, they went out, did what they had to do. And the next thing you know, they ran up against Bar Jesus. But in the midst of dealing with Bar Jesus, there was another man, Sergius Paulus, who desired to hear the word of God. But watch this. He couldn't desire it on his own. Why? Because Bar Jesus was running interference. How many people that you know that you work with want to hear the word of God, but there's a Bar Jesus in his way. Oh, glory to God. Watch this. Distracting them from hearing the word of God. But get the picture. Sergius Paulus was a what? Intelligent man. He was a bright man. He was a smart man. But the Bible said he sought to hear the word of God. Two things are happening. The devil is distracting. But Bar Jesus is what? Concentrating. 
Oh, glory to God. In the midst of all of his sorcery, Sergius Paulus said, enough of that foolishness. I need to hear the word of God. Can I get an amen? Oh, glory to God. So watch this. He said, stop in the name of Jesus. I need a word from the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. Glory to God. He said, he said, but, but watch this. Verse 8. But Elamus, the magician, what is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the pro council away from the faith. Wherever there is a spiritual opportunity, there is a what? A demonic opposition. Don't you leave here tonight. Don't you go to work tomorrow thinking that you have somebody in mind you want to share the gospel with because the devil says, whatever you plan to do, I have an encounter for you. I will stop the word of God. Therefore, that's why we entitled the message tonight, you have to what? Press in. You got to push through. You can't let nothing stop you when you've been what? Called. You've been what? Born again. So therefore, if there is any level of salvation on you, I need you to know and you to know what? The devil has a distraction waiting on you. You can have the best of intentions. But he has the best of distractions. Can I get an amen? Oh, glory to God. So whatever you plan to do for God, when you pray at night, Lord, when I go to work tomorrow, I'm going to win five souls to Christ. Devil said, that's a lie. It's not going to happen under my watch. And he goes and he attacks. Amen. I'm, I'm hurrying on to a close. But listen, Paul, in verse 9, Paul said, who was also called Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked at him intently and called him exactly what he was. You son of the devil. Oh, glory to God. You son of a biscuit eater. Look at you. What are you doing? He said, you enemy of all righteousness. What do you think you're doing? Full of all deceit, villainy. Will you not stop making crook the straight paths of the Lord? Who put a stop to the foolishness? Somebody say Paul did. How did he do it? He had to face that spirit. He had to face that demon. So now get the picture. Paul says, in the name of Jesus, enough of your foolishness, sir. I have just had enough. Is it really that simple, y'all? Hallelujah. Is it really that simple to stop the work of the devil? What you're missing is the Bible said Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I said to you Sunday, I don't want you to ask God to fill you anymore. Come on, lift up both hands and say I'm already filled. Oh, glory to God. You don't need another filling, baby. You have more than enough to handle whatever comes your way. Can I get an amen? So Paul, full of the Holy Spirit, he dealt with him. And then Paul, listen in verse 11, and said, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You will be blind and unable to see. Look at verse 12. Once he calls the, the, uh, the sorcerer to become blind, look at verse 12. The proconsul did what? Believed. He said, oh my God. The word of God is what? Real. Paul dealt with that demon right then and there. And guess what happened? The proconsul believed. What did he believe? That God was real. And that no weapon formed against any of God's people can prosper. Now, what's the difference between Paul and us? Well, I'm glad you asked, Bishop. Let me answer yourself. The difference is Paul recognized he was what? On an assignment. He was called. Get the picture. So if you're born again, you are called to do what? To serve. Yes. You are called to do what? To minister. Glory to God. Now, 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 nobody said you had to be a preacher to do that. I've led more people to Christ before I ever became a preacher. Amen? And so the reality is that's the way it works. Now, you are caught up with me in verse 36. Amen? Glory to God. I wanted you to see that. 
Because now in verse 36, we shift to a man by the name of David. And David was what? King of Israel. Watch this now. For David, the king of Israel, after he had what? Served. Why would he serve? Because he recognized he was on an assignment. Can I get it, amen? See, watch it. It's not work when you're on an assignment. It's what? Service. You don't do it out of duty. You do it out of your own free will. Can I get an amen? Because you know to be born again, you had to be called by God to be born again. You just didn't wake up one morning and decide, I'm going to get saved. No, when you got saved, that was God's calling on your life. Can I get an amen? So now let's all agree. David had a what? A calling. For David, after, now watch this, that means what? A timeline. How old was David when he died? 70 years old. Isn't that amazing? Three score and ten. Seventy. I thought the man was older than that. But he died at age 70. So watch this. For David, after he had what? Served. Uh huh. Watch that. Watch that. When you serve, you are operating under a what? Commission. Can I get an amen? amen? See, before you can get your assignment, you must first be commissioned. commissioned. Can I get an amen? Woo, glory to God. So watch this. When, before you became born again, you were what? Commissioned. How is that possible, Bishop? Because Jeremiah 1.5 says what? Before I formed you in your mother's belly, I called you to be a prophet to the what? Nations. God said, before you became born again, I already had a commission waiting on you. I just needed you to get saved so I can put my commission on your life. Now watch that. Why do you serve? You serve because there is a commission on your life. Can I get an amen? And what does a commission mean? It simply means you are going to operate under divine authority. Now, somebody say amen right there. Amen. Isn't that what Paul did? He operated in divine authority and told that sorcerer to hush. I'm tired of your foolishness. In the name of Jesus, stop. And now when he stopped, he said, you will be blind for a period of time. And what Paul decreed and declared happened. Why? He was commissioned to do it. Somebody say, I'm commissioned to live this way. I'm commissioned to do what I do. I have a divine anointing on my life. Watch that. I have divine authority in my life. Amen. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be. All you have to be is what? Born again. Amen. Now, y'all looking at me like I'm starting some trouble. But it's time for you to what? Press in. See, opposition makes you pull back. But when you know there's a commission on your life, when there's an assignment on your life, you have to do what? Press through the opposition. Now, you know what I've discovered. When I go skating in the morning, the majority of the time, the wind is coming out of the south. But the route I go I have to face the south more than I do the north. But with that south wind facing me, I have to get low and press in on them skates just to try and cut through the wind. How many of you know you just can't run with your head straight up in the air when you're running into a headwind? You have to get down. You have to control your breathing. You got to get a stride. And then you got to press through the resistance of the what? Wind. Right. So watch this. So then when opposition comes against you, what does God say? Press in. Hallelujah. Don't stand straight up. Get down low. Hallelujah. And press through whatever is working against you. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, glory to God. So listen. He said press in. But look at the next thing he wants you to do. 
Hallelujah. He says, he said, for after David had served, um, he had served the purpose of God. What does that mean? What is the purpose of God? What is the will of God? Watch this, watch this. That just simply means your ministerial assignment. Got it? So watch this, watch this. When you press in, the next thing you must do is what? Hold on tightly. Because the devil will make you doubt that you call to what? Serve. You'll give up on church. You'll give up on reading your Bible. You'll give up on fasting. You'll give up on prayer. Watch this. What, I, what the Lord wanted me to tell you tonight is when you came in here, number one, you are commissioned. Number two, you have an assignment on your life. So press in and then hold on tightly. Can I get an amen? Because you are finna get rocked and tossed all over the place, but you must do what? Press in. Hallelujah. Listen, this is what the devil does right now. This is why he hinders your marriage. He hinders your finances. But you got to learn how to press in. Okay. And then you have to hold on tightly. What are you going to hold on tightly to? Your faith. Yeah. Because what did the demon... All right, all right now, now look. Now, now watch this. Let's go back to verse, um, verse 8. But Edom was the magician... For that is the meaning of his name, oppose them. Seeking to turn the pro council away from what? His faith. Woo, glory to God. That's what that sorcerer wanted to do. He didn't want this man to get the word of God. He didn't want him to walk by faith. He wanted to rob him of his faith. Somebody said, press in and then hold on tightly. Woo, glory to God. Can I, cause listen, 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 the devil wants to rob you of your what? Faith. Somebody got to tell him you can't have it. I've worked too hard for this. I just can't give it up like that. No matter what I'm going through, I can't give it up. Amen? So watch this, watch this. You have a commission on your life. Now, your commission is different from your anointing. Can I get an amen? But watch this. When you serve with a, co with a commission, then you have a ministerial assignment. Can I get an amen? Now, watch this. Watch the text. We back in verse 36. He said, after he served the purpose of God, in his own generation. Amen. So watch this. He had a ministry. That he had to hold on to. Watch this now. In his own generation. What, what, what is he talking about there? You must have a commission. You have an assignment. Number three. You must operate by what? A conviction. What do you mean, Bishop? He was convicted to operate in the generation in which he was what? Chosen to operate in. Can I get an amen? Now watch this. If you don't have any convictions about what you do, you won't do it wholeheartedly. Am I right about it? So let me ask you a question. When you started out with God, you were super convicted. But now that you've grown a little bit, you are not asked convicted. Hallelujah. So watch what I'm saying. The devil then, if he can make you question your faith, he'll lessen your conviction. So listen, press in and hold on tight. Why? Because when you minister to people and they disappoint you, that makes you question, why was I doing this in the first place? And he will loosen your conviction. And then you'll be, you, you won't be as enthusiastic to do it. And then all of a sudden, you'll stop from doing it. Amen? So get the picture. The enemy wants to do nothing but discourage you. Hallelujah. Amen. But you have to deal with that enemy. Can I get an amen? Let's go to Ezekiel right quick. I want to just show you one thing in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, and I want you to find verse 30, uh, yeah, verse 38, Ezekiel chapter 38, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, yeah, it's 39, Ezekiel 39. 
Anybody there? Amen. Now look at verse 1. <clears throat> Ezekiel 39, 1. And you, son of man, speaking of Ezekiel, prophesy against Gog and say, thus says the Lord God. Behold, Gog, I, God, am against you. O Gog, chief prince of what? Meshach. And what? Tubal. If he's a chief prince, that makes him a what? An arch demon. See, we have archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Ariel, all of them, but the devil has his own. He's a copycat. So watch this. God now is telling this chief prince that he is totally against what he's doing. Amen? Woo, glory to God. Now look at verse 2. And our God will turn you about and drive you forward and bring you up from the uttermost parts of the north and lead you against the mountain of Israel. Then I will strike your bow from your left hand, make your arrows drop out of your right hand. You shall fall on the mountain of Israel and on and on and on. Listen to me. Just because we have archangels, he's a chief prince. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 10. And we are almost done. I'm all, that's, just Daniel is the book right after Ezekiel. So go to your right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Daniel chapter 10. <clears throat> look at verse. Uh, look at verse. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Look at verse 13. The prince. Of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. What kind of prince is he? A chief prince. That's a powerful demon. Now that wasn't a man on a horse that we call the prince, the son of a king. When you see this word prince in the Bible, it is referring to demons. So watch this now. Daniel had to deal with it, right? Now watch this. He withstood me 21 days. He delayed it. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I was left there with the, key, with the uh, kings of Persia. So the chief prince here would be Michael, the archangel. He's a chief prince. So now the first one is a chief demon. The second one is an archangel. You can call him an arch demon or an arch, I don't care how you label it. I just need you to understand what you up against when you try and do the word of God. Now somebody shout, press in. Woo! Now watch this, hold on tightly. David spent 70 years of his life fighting. And then he what? He died. And then when he died, hallelujah, he died well because he served. He died well because he operated under his assignment. He operated under conviction. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing, and then we're ready to move on. Amen? Drop down to verse 20 of Daniel chapter 10. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come behind him. When you've had to deal with one chief demon... You're going to have to deal with two or three in the name of Jesus. Woo! Isn't that why Jesus said, when there are two or three gathered in my name, I'm in the midst? So when two believers get together, Jesus says, I'm there. And Listen, one can put 10,000 to flight. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the idea is, press in and hold on tightly to your face, thanks to God. Don't let the enemy rock your wall. You have the power to stop them things. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. So now let's go back to Acts chapter 13. We're going home. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my help tonight. So David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, what happened to him? Somebody say he fell asleep. Watch that. He served well. He served under conviction. He served under his commission. He served under the anointing that he had. And after 70 years, God took his life. Now get the picture. Us is going that way one day. So now get the picture. 
he fell asleep. Now notice the Bible did not. Does your Bible say he died? Or did your Bible say he fell asleep? Now isn't it interesting the Bible didn't say he died? The Bible said he fell asleep. Now what does that mean, Bishop? Watch this now. Here's what that means. His temporary life had come to an end. But his new life had already begun. Watch this. When you die, your temporary life has ended. But your new life has already started on the other side. Can I get an amen? So watch this. What was the end of David was just his end here on earth. His 70 years were over. But now he's in the land of the living in his inheritance living, worshiping, and praising God. Can I get an amen? So watch this. When you leave here, you need to remind yourself, devil, it ain't over. I'll deal with you on the other side. Amen? Woo. Now, you may get a victory or two over on me on earth, but get the picture. When it look like I'm losing, somebody say I'm winning. Are you down for the count? The devil wants to rob you of your faith. He wants to rob you of your convictions. Don't let him have that victory. Amen. He goes on to say he fell asleep and was laid or buried with his fathers, his ancestors. Watch this. His, his bloodline. Watch this now. Why is that important? Because when David died, his sins died with him. Would you agree with that? Watch this. Watch this. Now, now. If your mother and your father has passed as mine have, whatever sins they committed died with them. Can I get an amen? Now their sins can't pass to the third and fourth generation anymore. Are you with me? Glory to God. So, so, so if mama was a hellion, daddy was a hellion, that's the end of that. But there's one problem. Ezekiel 18, and I'm done. Last thing. Hallelujah. Y'all can tell I love Ezekiel, right? Hallelujah. At least tonight. Ezekiel 18. I don't want you to ever forget this as long as you live. In Ezekiel 18, look at verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? He said, the fathers. See that word? That's the same word that is, that is mentioned in Acts chapter 8. The ancestors, those in your bloodline, what about them? They have eaten sour grapes. What are sour grapes? The sins of the fathers, the sins of your parents. Are you with me, saints of God? And the children's teeth are set on edge. Hallelujah. And the children's teeth, what does that mean? The propensity for mama and daddy's sins are ready for you to bite into. In other words, mama and daddy died with that mess. But the potential for you to have the same sins are there. So what does that mean? Then the devil sets you up. And whatever took mama out and took daddy out to get their faith off track, he knows now it's going to be successful with you. How many of you look like your mama? How many of you look like your daddy? How many of you act like him? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. So watch this, saints of God. In the name of Jesus. He is simply saying, the children's teeth are set on edge to do what's been done. Amen? Glory to God. That's what that's all about. So listen, you tell the devil tonight that the sins of your mama, the sins of your daddy are dead. I am not going to do what they did. It's over. Can I get an amen? I will not live like my daddy lived. I will not live like my mama lived. Now, here's the key. Watch it now because he's going to set a trap for you to be just like him. 
He going to set up a situation where you going to be just like him. Watch it. And you going to see yourself. And then you going to go, oh, my God. I'm just like who I didn't want to be. Have you said that to yourself? I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my mom. But listen, the propensity is you will. But that's the potential. But you don't have to be. Can I get an amen? See, when you're born again, you control your destiny. When you be born again, you have the character of Christ. And listen, I've said to my mama, I've said to my dad, no! I'm my own man! Hallelujah. Now, watch, 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 watch it. My father in the ministry. I learned what not to do up under him. I will not do that. I will not be that way. Have you said that yet? Listen, you better tell the devil right now. I'm not going to be that way. And can't no devil in hell persuade me, no matter what you do. Can I get an amen? Woo! I don't care if they live the life of sainthood. You need to be what? Different. Because you have a different level of anointing. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. So watch this. What God has poured into you is greater than what mama and daddy had. You need to rise up and walk in your anointing. You need to rise up and walk into your favor. And say that mess from mama is buried. That stuff from daddy is no longer a part of me. I'm God's man. I'm God's woman. Now somebody shout, break in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Break! Amen. That mess is no longer on my life. Don't mean that you don't like mama, that you don't love mama and daddy, but you don't necessarily need to be like them. Didn't Jesus say in John chapter 4, greater works than these you would do? When are we going to see the greater works out of your life? Oh, glory to God. Let's go back to Acts and I'm going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, press in. And hold on tightly. David saw what? Corruption. Now what does that mean? Now watch this. That meant that what he knew of God changed. And it's not the way it was when he started out. Can I get an amen? Watch this now. That's what corruption means. Watch this. Watch this now. When you first became born again, you started out one way. But now you're an entirely different way. That's what he's saying. He saw corruption. Not just dishonesty and all of that wickedness. No, no, no. He's saying things have changed from the way God intended it. And David saw what? Corruption. He saw what God intended. He saw the effects of sin in the world and how sin did things. And he said he saw corruption. Look at verse 39. He said, I'm sorry, verse 38. But he whom God raised up did not see what? Corruption. Why is it Jesus didn't see corruption? Why is it? Jesus went to hell when he died. Okay? Jesus went down to hell. You can look in Ephesians 4, verse 7. He went down to hell and visited hell, and then he went back to heaven. But whatever was in hell, he took it captive and took it back. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on, let's go to Ephesians right quick, y'all. Come on, you, I just got to show this to you. Ephesians chapter 4. Come on. Hallelujah. Now watch this, watch this. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, now look, at verse, look at verse 8. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host captive and gave gifts to men. He ascended. What does that mean? That he also went into the lower regions of the earth. That means hell, y'all. Jesus went to hell. Can I get an amen? And watch this. When he went to hell, he descended. He said, he who descended is the one who also ascended far above the heaven that he might be fulfilled. But now in verse 8, whatever it was, he led captivity what? Captive. He took everything that was in hell, took it back to heaven, 
conquered it, and then he said, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be loosed in heaven. Listen, so there, there's nothing that you and I can face that heaven can't deal with. Amen? Remember the scripture that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Why? Because Jesus went there and dealt with it. And he took a host back to heaven with him. Why? Because he wanted you to see that he's defeated and conquered anything that will come against you. So therefore, you have no reason to lose your faith. You have no reason to diminish in your convictions. Hallelujah. And that what you must do now is press in and hold on tightly. Can I get an amen? Ooh, glory to God. So, so, so now watch this. Watch this. If that's the case, how are you supposed to serve? I want to give you an illustration, right? That word serve there in the Greek is hupopoterio. And it means to row. Now you remember when the slaves was brought over here on the ship, what would happen? The taskmaster would set the cadence like this. Doom! And what would happen next? Doom! And what would they have to do? Roll. Doom! The cadence was set. And this is what the slaves did all across the ocean. That's all they did. And the taskmaster set the cadence. When they couldn't keep the cadence, they would be beaten with whips. And this is what they did. All the way across the ocean, all the way here to America, they what? Serve. But when you serve, it means what? To row. Woo! Glory to God. So they were rowing the whole time. Getting beat, getting killed. They kill one, throw them overboard, put another one in place, but they never lost the cadence. And therefore, everybody would start singing, Holy, 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 Holy. And they would do that all across the ocean. And they would have a rhythm and a cadence that they would follow all the way through until they got to the shores. But what's the application of the text? What's your rhythm? What's your cadence that God has you on? Don't let no devil get you out of stride. Don't let no taskmaster throw you off from what God done called you to do. Can I get an amen? And every time we see you, you ought to be serving on cadence, on point. I'm no ways tired, Bishop. I'm always rested, Lord. I'm ready for whatever you call me to do. He said, you got to press in. But you got to hold on tightly. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's go back to Acts. And I'm through preaching. I should, this should have been through. He said, but he whom God raised up did not see any what? Corruption. How many of you are born again? How many of you believe in the resurrection? Guess what? You ought not to be seen no what? Corruption. When you're born again, you don't see corruption. You may see what? Imperfection. But you don't see what? Corruption. Why? Because you got what it takes to neutralize that corruption in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So watch it. Just like that. Elamus, in the name of Jesus, stop. I've had enough of you. You will be blind for a season. And you start decreeing and declaring over things. So listen to me. God sent me by to remind you tonight. If, you, if Jesus been raised up and you are born again, you shall not see corruption. So let's close by saying this. When you look at the news, all of that looks like what? Corruption, doesn't it? But it all depends on the eye of the beholder. See, because you have supernatural eyes and you have an anointing, you don't see that as corruption. What do you supposed to see it as? Nothing but a symphony. And God is using that symphony 
to make some beautiful music. Because you know none of that mess what affects you, nor does it affect me. That's the sound bite that the media wants you to have so that you won't keep any what? Hope! But if you don't have faith, you can't have what? Hope! So then get the picture. When he robs you of your faith, then your hope goes away. Then you go back to doing what you used to do. Then you go back to showing up ways like mama and dad. And before you know it, you're like, oh my God, I'm just like my dad. I didn't want to do that. I'm just like my mama. But then he says, let it be known that this man, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, died for us to have forgiveness of sin. Now, when he says forgiveness of sin, what does he mean? He means self-forgiveness. Have y'all forgiven yourselves for what you've done wrong? Is your conscience free from guilt? Is that something you've done <laughs> and you haven't confessed it to God? When he talks about forgiveness of sins, he's talking about self Forgiveness. Now let me close with this. Mental disorders are filled with people who have not forgiven themselves. Drug addicts, alcoholics have not forgiven themselves. But we find ourselves in a quagmire. And so I'm saying to you, if somebody you know is bound up, twisted up in the game, remind them that Jesus has forgiven them. And now the hard part is you have to forgive yourself. So in the mighty name of Jesus, press in Amen. and hold on what? Tightly. And do what? Hallelujah. That's what you're supposed to do each and every day. Press your way through every obstacle that is working against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And praise be to God. Come on, let's bow and let me pray. Father in heaven, thank you for teaching us how to press in. I think we got that part down packed. We now need you to teach us how to hold on tightly. We have good days. We have bad days. But we need consistent days. Help us to hold on to our faith. Because we saw tonight that the enemy wants to rob us of our faith. But when we lose our faith, we lose our convictions. We lose our commitment to you. And then, over time, we have no hope. And so, God, if we don't have faith, faith sits in the seat of hope. Therefore, we find so many people who are hopeless. But what happened to get you there? A demon, a devil, a sorcerer, a magician. Somebody got you all twisted up in the game. And now... You have lost your faith. So God, I repent right now. And I ask you to forgive every one of their sins. Forgive me of my sins. And now that you've done that through the cleansing blood of Jesus, help me to forgive myself. So that I can do away with any mental disorders that I could ever, ever imagine to have. When I come clean with you, I am cured of my mental illness. When I come clean with you, I get a fresh start on life. And Lord, I thank you. Therefore, now, there is no condemnation, no guilt to them who are in Christ Jesus who has a commission, who's operating from a conviction, hallelujah, and who is walking in their assignment, Father. I thank you for the illustration tonight of the Apostle Paul. Let us adopt that, let that be us, and let us continue to walk 
like we need to walk. We thank you. We love you. And Father, teach us how to roll like the slaves rolled. They did not let anything stop them because the taskmaster would beat them. Don't let us lose the cadence and the rhythm we've established with you. Help keep us in line with where you want us to go. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, 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 amen. and praise be to God. Saints of God, you are dismissed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Press in, but hold on tightly. Ooh, glory to God. Because now the devil going to do his best to shake your faith tonight. Amen. Now listen, you got to tell him back up off of me. <laughs> <laughs>